All right, in this video, let's talk about something that hits home for so many of us, and that is debt. 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 If you're in debt right now, you might be feeling trapped, like you can't even think about investing or building wealth until you dig yourself out of that hole. But what if I told you that there was a better way? Stick with me because I'm going to show you how to flip the script on debt and start building wealth for your financial future right now. All right, first off, let's get real. Debt is an epidemic. In countries like Australia, personal debt is off the charts. We're talking a debt to income ratio that just broke 200%. That means for every $100,000 that they earn, they're blowing 200,000, okay? Just to keep up with their debts. And then there's places like Norway and Denmark who are on their way to 300% debt to income. That is absolutely crazy. This isn't just a problem, it is a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. But here's the thing, being in debt doesn't mean that you have to put your entire life on hold. You can and should start taking control today, right now. Your debt to income ratio should ideally be below 20% to feel comfortable and below 10% to feel free and I'll show you how to do that. Here's the first big lesson. Debt isn't just about numbers on a page. It's about mindset. If you're not fulfilled in your life, the more likely you are to chase quick fixes, escapism, spending money that you don't have to fill a void. That's how you end up as a net consumer instead of a net creator. And guess what? That's exactly how personal debt sneaks in and takes over your life. Now this might sound crazy, but hear me out. Start saving and investing before you pay off all of your debt. Yes, you heard that right. The reason that you're in debt is because you've been investing in other people's brands and products, not in yourself. So flip that script, pay yourself first, build your knowledge, grow your cash, and invest in your future. If it takes an extra year or two to clear the debt, then so be it. But in the end, you won't just be debt free, you'll have an investment portfolio that's ready to take off. Because let's face it, people who just focus on paying off their debt often fall into the same trap. They finally get out, they feel a sense of pride, and then what do they do? They splurge. And guess where that lands them? Right back in debt. It's a vicious cycle, but you can break it by focusing on paying you first. Now this is gonna sound a bit crazy, but you need to love your debt. Yes, love it. Why? Because gratitude is the key to mastering your finances. Most people look at debt like it's some monster to be slayed, but that mindset keeps you stuck. So instead, recognize the opportunities that your debt has given you and the experiences and the lessons and the growth. Ask yourself, what trips did my debt make possible? What clothes, what cars or experiences did I get to enjoy because of it? What lessons have I learned that I wouldn't trade for anything else? Now this isn't about saying that debt is good, it's about transcending that judgment altogether. And when you can see your debt as just part of your life's journey, you'll approach it with gratitude, respect, and determination to move beyond it. That's how you break free permanently and sustainably. Now, here's the juicy bit. What can you do to clear the debt right now? Well, the two most effective methods of clearing debt are the snowball and the avalanche. The snowball method actually focuses on paying the smallest debt first, and the avalanche method focuses on paying the highest interest debt first. Now, before I go into either of these methods, one thing that you need to bear in mind is before you do any of these, you have to decide that you're going to clear the debt, okay? You have to decide that you're going to have the discipline to say, I'm going to clear debt and put that as your plan. You need to be able to focus on clearing the debt or at least keeping your DTI ratio below 20%, but none of these methods will work unless you decide that you're actually going to do it. So put in the comments right now that you're gonna do it. All right, so the first one is the snowball method. And the beauty of this is it really helps you focus and it's encouraging and it's motivating and you see progress and it helps you feel good and you're clearing your debt. And with this one, really, you only focus on two things. It's the total owed, or the principal of the entire loan and the minimum monthly payment, 
okay? We don't focus on the highest interest rates or anything like that. It's just the total owed and the minimum monthly payment. And then what we do is we organize them in ascending order from the lowest debt to the highest debt. So that you can see here, I've got an IOU for $500. I've got a store card for $1,500. I've got a credit card for $2,000. And I've got a student loan, which is $6,000. And we organize them smallest to largest. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna write down the balance, which is due and the minimum payment per month. So we've got $30 is the minimum payment on the IOU, 60 on the store card, 50 on the credit card, and 220 on the student loan. So once we've organized all our debts in ascending order from lowest to highest, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to continue to pay the minimum payments on all of these, but we're gonna muster up all of our energy to get as much money together to put towards the lowest debt. So at the moment, you can see that we're paying $30 minimum per month. But let's just say that we put in all our efforts and we find another $70 per month and we put that towards the smallest debt. We cut out the Starbucks, we cancel some meals out or something or get in the pizzas and we put that towards this smallest debt. So now we're paying $100 per month off of that first debt. And as the months go by, it's only gonna take five months before that debt is clear. But then what we do, instead of just continuing to pay the minimum payments on the next lowest amount, what we instead is we transfer that payment that we was already paying and add it towards the next one as if we haven't paid that first one off. So we add the 100 that we were paying to the IOU to the store card, which we were paying 60. Now we're paying 160 per month on the store card. And as we continue to pay those down, we're knocking off the store card as quickly as possible until eventually, when that one's paid, we then do the same and we start transferring it over. So we put the 160 onto the credit card per month. We're now paying 210 towards the credit card. And as the months go by, we're knocking that down as quickly as possible until we get to the end. And then we transfer onto the final student loan. And now we're paying $430 per month to pay that down as quickly as possible. And you can see as the months go down, we become debt free in this example, 24 months and we're debt free. Now the great thing about planning this method is that it allows you to focus on that final payment because of course, as the snowball grows, the payment gets larger and larger. So before you've started this plan, before you've started to clear down the debt using the snowball, you know what you've got to fork out on those later payments, those higher figures, right? So by doing that, it keeps you focused and it keeps you discipline and hopefully stops you getting more debt because you're thinking right in 10 months time 11 months time I've got to be paying 400 500 per month on one loan and sometimes this can go up to a thousand two thousand three thousand pounds or dollars for the last few payments and by having that on paper before you start the plan it gives you a clear roadmap and stops you having any kind of temptations or going to get more debt right so that's the snowball method. And as I say, you can download my tool if you're in part of my private mastermind, but I wanna show you the next method, which is the avalanche method. Now it's quite similar to the snowball method. However, there's some slight differences. This method actually is mathematically better than the snowball. However, it doesn't seem to have the same success rate of the snowball at clearing down debt because of the psychology reason, right? It's, ma it's mathematically better because it reduces the time that you can actually pay off the debt quicker using this method. And actually you're paying less interest as well, but it doesn't have the same success rate because of psychology. So what we were doing in the last example is we were ascending the, the loans from lowest balance to highest balance, right? Now the avalanche method is slightly different. And what we do is we wanna know the interest rate on each of the loans. So once we know the interest rates, we can then arrange these in descending order so that we have the highest interest rate first. And when we work out how much we can chuck at the first loan, as we did in the first example, when we came up with the extra $70, in this case, we're attacking the highest interest loan instead. So we're putting that one first and we're doing the same thing. We're paying the minimum payments on all the other loans whilst chucking as much money as possible at the highest interest loan. And over time, this will actually pay off debts faster and you'll pay the least amount of interest over the term time of all the loans. Now, as I said, the reason that this is not as successful, particularly in my opinion, is people like to see progress. People like that endorphin release when they see things getting paid down and ticks getting ticked off. So for instance, on this one, we're paying 1500 balance first as opposed to a 500 balance. 
not only that, we're paying more on the initial monthly outlay, so it's not as encouraging, it's a bit harder to manage, whereas the snowball effect, you're paying less at the beginning, and then you're paying more and more, but you don't mind because you're seeing the debts get paid down. So you've got that snowball effect. So it's more successful to do the snowball, just because of the psychology of humans, but the avalanche method is mathematically better in terms of paying it down quicker and paying less interest over time. So those are the two methods. That's how you handle debt. Now, if you really are ready to stop letting debt control your life and start making these shifts today, then do it now, commit to it now, understand the psychology, pay yourself first, and more importantly, embrace gratitude because it's time to start rewriting your financial story and that starts now. And if you really are struggling with this stuff, I do have more videos on mindset and you can even take my millionaire mindset program which will help you become unstoppable when it comes to attracting, building, scaling your wealth and creating the life that you want. You can find all those links in the description. Let me know in the comments if you're committed to this. If you've watched this far, you might as well let me know in the comments. I'm sure you're committed. And if you are, I know in 12 months, 24 months, you'll be debt free and I want you to message me to let me know. And until next time, take care and I'll see you in the next video.